Unlock your potential and discover the greatness God has placed inside you. David Winston shares how to walk in your purpose by living an authentic life. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, do you sometimes feel like you wish you could change your quirks or flaws or even personality? Maybe you feel like you're not good enough to accomplish the dream God's placed in your heart. Well, the truth is that everything about you was created with purpose. And today's guest is here to reveal just how important that is. But first, joining me around the table is a purpose-filled woman, Anna Kendall. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Delighted to be here, and this is a fabulous message. It is, and yes. you know what? We are all uniquely created, yes, right? Yes. We don't have to be like somebody else. No. We need to be who God created because us to be. everybody else is already taken, so we might as well be ourselves. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. There is not another Anna Kendall. There is not another Anna Kendall. Kendra Kelly Dean, how are you? Hey, I am good. Yeah. Sometimes it is hard, though, to put that list away, yes. right? And right, the comparison, right. we can't do that. But we have yeah. to be who he's called us to be, like Anna said. There's only one of us, and we have to be that person yes. the best and we can with Holy Spirit. Because everybody else is taken, so yeah. don't I try to be done. somebody right. else. I love Dorothy Newton, that. we have to be our Smitten. authentic self. Yes, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, because just like Anna said, you don't want to be me, and I don't want to be you. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind being, you know what I mean? I but I, I like being. That is the authentic <laughs> Dorothy talking. That, that is so good. good. I don't know. I might want to be Dorothy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that I could say that. So. But you know what? Awesome. I mean, like, as far as character and all yeah, those yeah. wonderful things, yeah. I would love to be you. But what he's called you to is mm -hmm. not necessarily what he's called me to. Yeah, yeah. And so there's unique differences. Yeah. But all is so powerful and, and, and passionate and purposeful yes, and for sure. wonderful. And yeah. Cindy Johnson, it's all really powerful <laughs> and purposeful when we are surrendered to God and allow him to do in and through us what he created us to do. Yes, yeah. because he does use everything we've gone through, our personalities, yeah. our quirks, which I have many, and <laughs> I'm happy. Yeah. I like my quirks. We all have <laughs> yeah. a few quirks <laughs> here and there. We all have a few quirks. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I like you. Your, your black there. Thank you. That's ah, nice. Thank you very much. Got your turquoise with it. Yes, yeah, we're beautiful. Looking, beautiful. Beautiful. looking there. good. <laughs> Well, he is the pastor of Go Hard for Christ Youth Ministry at Living Word Christian Center, as well as the director of Bill Winston Ministries. He's here today to talk about the beauty and power of being authentic. Please welcome David Winston. Authentic self. Yes. yes. That's right. Everybody else is taken, right? That's right. Yes. Love I love that. that. Anna said everybody else is taken. So it. You need to be you. you because many people are struggling with inadequacy and inferiority. But God has made each person, each of us, with gifts and talents, and drive, and divine purpose. So how do we unlock that greatness in our lives? Well, according to David, it starts with authenticity. And today he's here to tell us why. And he wrote a book called The Confidence to Be Yourself, Authentic, mm -hmm. The Courage to Release Your Greatness. Now tell me what inspired this book, David. Just my own journey, really. You know, as I follow in my father's um, uh, footsteps, as I grew up, you know, in his shadow, he's done so many great things in ministry. Um, however, that can be intimidating sometimes. Yeah. And I think we all have our own journey where we can be intimidated by maybe some predecessors who have gone before us mm -hmm. or what we see on social media and, and those kind of yeah. things. But, you know, this journey came and was going in the direction where God was trying to tell me that I have been created special and unique for the purpose to which he's called me to. And the way to accomplish his purpose is to be exactly who he's called me to be. Now, you're the youngest in the family. That's right. And your dad, he was just with us. 
And you can just listen to Bill Winston and he will convince you that whatever he's doing, that it is a God <laughs> thing and you want to get on board and do it. He just has that anointing. Absolutely. Right? He does, right. yeah. He convinces us all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now he, um, that was kind of, if you will, although you loved and admired your father, it wasn't really the track of ministry that you thought you would go on. So tell us a little bit about that journey and how you found the right track. Yeah, so I grew up uh, you know, in a Christian household, pastoral household, but I wanted to be a cardiologist. I wanted to be a heart surgeon, and even from a young age, before I could spell the word cardiologist. And so went on pursuing that, graduated from high school, went on to Oral Roberts University, uh, and I was studying biology pre-med. I changed my major, but kept my concentration. And it was my senior year at ORU that God spoke to me and called me into full-time ministry wow. and told me that I had misunderstood the calling, even though I correctly heard it. Uh -huh. He said, he's called me to be a spiritual heart surgeon. Uh -huh. Oh, to do okay. surgery so in the hearts good. of men and women and young people, you yes. know, all around the world. And so I accepted that calling and started walking in it. Oh, <laughs> so what did you think when, I mean, you were clear on that and, and how did you hear the voice of God on that? Like, how did he speak to you? Sure. I was actually at a um, young adult conference at a local church there in Tulsa and I was crying out at the altar as often we find ourselves in that place because I was at this place where things weren't going so well. Life was okay, but I wasn't getting those open doors that I needed. I was applying for medical schools, but I, I wasn't getting anywhere. I was feeling that level of hindrance and I was just getting frustrated. I remember being at the altar on my knees crying out and I said these words, Joni, I said, God, I don't care what it is, whatever it is, wow. I want it. Yeah. And I divorce myself from my will. God, mm. just give me your will. Give me a fresh understanding of oh, what Oh, that you is want me a powerful do. prayer, yeah. folks. Well, it's, it's a dangerous prayer. <laughs> no, it, it's, the, it's the prayer I wrote on a letter when I was 20 years old to it's God. It's a prayer of surrender. Because it is a surrender all prayer. It's, it's like people, like, you know Jesus, and you know you're going to heaven, you've been forgiven, but you really haven't said, God, not my will, yes, yes. but right. your will be done in my life. Right. And somehow people think if they pray that prayer, they're going to be unhappy. But the truth is, he knows what he's put on the inside of us mm -hmm. better right. than we do. Is that right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And his will will yeah. always lead to internal fulfillment for so us. True. Every so time. True. Because we will find ourselves in the middle of purpose mm -hmm. and living out the thing that God has called us to do. So did you get a peace when you, when you made that surrender? Absolutely. I got, I got a peace. And then I got like, um, I don't want to say an anxiety, but a like, oh, Lord, what do I do now? Yeah. I'm like, what's going to happen now from this yeah. moment? Yeah, because I had this plan, and all yeah. of a sudden, I'm very Absolutely. You surely yeah. learned a lot about the body anyway. Oh, yeah, through I sure did. Yeah. 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 So it's interesting when you told your mom and dad that you had made a, a life-changing decision, mm -hmm. what they said. They said, well, praise God. And, and that I sounds remember, just like it. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, praise God. And, uh, you know, Dad said, yeah, yeah, I, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and talking to them in retrospect, they yeah. said that they felt that I always had a call to ministry mm, on my life. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't want to force me into ministry, yeah, which right. I appreciated. So they wise. wanted it to be authentic to yeah. me yes. and for me to hear God's voice. You know, it's interesting so many times how parents will know. Yeah. And yep. God will show them things about their kids, yeah. you know. And um, that was important that you respond to the call. Yeah. God's call, right. not your dad's right. call, not You're your right. mom's call. And so, um, so talk about where people are today in trying to find authenticity and greatness. How do we do that? And what does it look like? I think it starts first with valuing ourselves. Mm -hmm. mm. And I believe that the quickest way to devalue something special is to compare it to something else. Yeah. Mm. That we're faced with so many opportunities in culture and in life to compare ourselves with yeah. other people, what you're doing, what you're saying, how you're being. And it starts to lead to a subtle devaluing of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to press the reset button on our value mm -hmm. and understand where our value should come from. Our value comes from our creator first. Yes. It doesn't come from other outside external uh, uh, forces. It comes from who we are as God has created us to be. Mm -hmm. And I believe that confidence grows from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and isn't it funny how some people think that it has to be perfect, mm -hmm. right? Like, no, when I do this, then I'll be ready. When this happens, when things line up just mm -hmm. right, perfectly. But you make a really great example in your book about how masterpieces are mm -hmm. like, 
there's flaws in those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so can you tell us about that? Absolutely. And, and I talk about the, um, the Mona Lisa, right, mm -hmm. uh, that was created by Leonardo da Vinci. And it took him 16 years mm -hmm. to complete. I couldn't imagine painting something for 16 years. But, you know, he did it. And as you examine it, you actually can see, if you go in close, that the Mona Lisa, she doesn't really have any eyebrows. Now, what's interesting, and really, what's no, interesting for us is all of you fabulous ladies have wonderful eyebrows. Thank you. And so in our culture, it's something that's so valued. Right. But yeah. as we're looking at that painting back then, that's something that seems to have been omitted for whatever reason. Wow. Wow. Now, we can criticize it, or we can look at it for what it is. Mm -hmm. Still a masterpiece. Yes. Right. It's a masterpiece not because it's flawless, it's a, a, a price, uh, excuse me, it's a masterpiece not because it's flawless, it's a masterpiece because it's priceless. Yes. Mm. And to be able to create a masterpiece, I've learned that you have to be a master yourself. Yeah. Mm. So and, good. and we serve the ultimate master. Yes. Yeah. Which means that we're all masterpieces mm -hmm. made in his image and likeness. Yes. David, you sound so optimistic, and, <laughs> but you state in your book that you were a pessimist no. at one time. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 uh, no. <laughs> in total disbelief. To no, <laughs> you know, and and I've had I've had to learn why God created me that way, and I know you know that we have a title pessimist, but I actually like to see it as a problem identifier. Mm -hmm. okay. That is true. And yes. what God allowed me to see is the same person who can see the problem also can be the solution carrier mm -hmm. to solve right. the problem. There you go. Yes. That's great. And so I stopped looking at myself as just a problem finder. Yeah. I started looking at myself as a problem solver. That's that is so, so good. That's so good. And a lot of times what the enemy will do is he'll try to tell us that we should be ashamed of how we are and, and who we are and kind of yeah. the way we are, but we have to get God's divine perspective yes. on how we are to see how that can really benefit mankind. Oh, and don't so you think, too, that people that give their opinions, like when you maybe notice something mm. and are pessimistic, they think about it, that they had their ideas of, well, you shouldn't do that, or you shouldn't look at things that way, and really, God is wanting you to look at things that way. Right. Absolutely. So that you can solve the problem. Yeah. Yep. What about... There's so many young people, and older as well, but they are going through identity crisis, yes. like major. Yes. yes. And you've said so many things about finding their authentic self and, and being comfortable in that. But what would you say to, I, I know a young girl, she's just 14, mm -hmm. but going through major identity crisis mm -hmm. and loves the yeah. Lord. Yeah. And, and I, of course, I deal with a lot of young people. And so I see a lot of this, a lot of different identity issues. And I think they're more heightened now than ever. Yeah, sure. And I say, we always have to go back to the word of God. And we always have to go back to the creator. I call him the great manufacturer mm -hmm. because he's the one that created us. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to have a conversation about authenticity, it can never be based on the outside influence of someone who didn't create or didn't introduce the purpose, the original purpose of the thing. When we're talking about authenticity, we're not talking about it as the world's culture has defined it. Right. We have to talk about it as the original intent from the manufacturer yeah. himself because that's where we'll find the most authenticity mm -hmm. and the most fulfillment. Yeah. And that would be the creator of the universe. Yes. That's right. That's right. And so... Um, that is a huge problem that you mentioned, it is. Mm -hmm. Cindy, because again, social media can be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Sure. But it I can I can see how it is used in a negative way in yeah. that, like especially for young people, mm -hmm. where voices and opinions are allowed mm -hmm. into their conscience, mm -hmm. <laughs> to their conscious mm -hmm. uh, being that uh, can say, well, you should be like this or you shouldn't be like this, or you should look this way, exactly. or you know, and they're not. Uh, listening to a voice that is led by the Holy Spirit right, yeah. and they get off track and they allow all these voices yes. and at some point you've got to understand that that's not really healthy to allow people right. mm -hmm. to yeah. judge you or give you information or talk to you right, about what exactly. you need right. to do who don't even know you right. or know what's in your heart. Only God can do right. that. Is that right? A absolutely. And, and, you know, even psychologists say that we as humans weren't wired to receive as many opinions now as we have opened ourselves up mm. to, oh. and, you know, with social media and Preach different it. things. <laughs> yes. I, I, I know your husband is a psychologist. <laughs> yes, like, yes. like, 
there's so much documentation that says that there is a cascading negative effect right. yes. for all of the it. information and opinions that we've opened ourselves up to. Wow. And then now we're giving a platform for those opinions to mm -hmm. weigh in on who we are. It brings right. confusion. Yes. Right. So and nice. Did you know that um, my husband, Dr. Doug Weiss, he's a psychologist, he will not listen to one comment, good or bad, mm -hmm. on social media. Yeah. He's, and he knows not to allow that into yeah, his brain. So and I'll tell him, but this is really good. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that person. Exactly. exactly. He said, I will yeah. allow the yeah. people yes. that I engage with, mm -hmm. family, friends, mm -hmm. I want to hear so mm -hmm. what they have to say. He said, but these people, they don't know me, they don't know my heart, they don't know mm -hmm. my situation. So I'm not even going to allow. He won't even allow me to read a good comment. <laughs> and it's really healthy. Yeah. And I yes. just think sometimes we need to get off of social media, mm -hmm. get off oh, Instagram, yeah. Yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Because it's addictive to yeah. hear the opinions of people, especially right. if they're good. And yeah. not just that. I mean, you're measuring, you're comparing yourself. Yes. So my question to you, what are some practical ways how the social media population can, population can overcome defeat um, and, and claim it as a good thing? I, I think it goes back to something that you just said that Dr. Doug is doing. I think we have to limit the voices mm -hmm. that are speaking into us. Yes. Because even though we read that comment, um, they may not be some, somebody that we know personally, mm -hmm. but yet it's like our subconscious still receives it the same way yes, as I would does. receive it from somebody I know personally. So yeah. And so I think, first of all, we have to be very careful about the seeds that are planted in the soil of our heart. So good. Because yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. our heart will grow anything that we put into it. Ooh. That's good. And, it, wow. and you're having to deal with young people who are inundated mm -hmm. with yes. hundreds of comments every yes. day and they're looking at every Instagram post, mm -hmm. every like, every yes. Facebook comment, and it is affecting their psyche in a powerful way and not in a good way. Mm -hmm. and, and we're seeing that. I mean, studies show that the suicide rates, and, and not to take a dramatic downward turn, but the suicide rates among uh, young people are, are way up, uh, especially among uh, middle school age girls. I mean, they're, they're double, almost triple. And we weren't designed to be able to handle the weight of the responsibility of other people's perceptions of us. And you yeah, know, David, so I think good. one of the things that is so damaging about social media and just the world today is how it is a spirit of comparison. Mm -hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. think comparison is a tool of the enemy. Mm -hmm. He always tries to compare us to someone that is better, greater, nicer, bigger, you know, whatever instead of comparing, and of course, yeah. if we go the other way, then it's prideful. So right. either way, it is not an instrument of the Lord. Well, and how important is it for you to discover who you are yeah. in order for you to figure out what your real purpose is supposed to be? Absolutely, and, and I say in this book that the more you discover who you are, you'll actually find that purpose starts to encounter you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, that's and a lot good. of times we're doing it backwards. Like a lot of young people say, you know, what's my purpose? They're looking for the to-do rather than the who are you. That's so and as you center in on the who are you, especially based on God's word, mm -hmm. and say, let me walk out this path of who God is calling me to be, you'll find yourself interested in things, trying things, having the courage to, to do new things, and you'll discover new things about you that mm -hmm. might lead to a life of you know, purpose and fulfillment in that area. So how did you overcome that growing up uh, in, in a great home, in a, in a great church, with a lot of people with opinions about the pastor's son. Ooh, there are a lot. <laughs> and you have overcome it. No, by the blood of the lamb, I have overcome. And the word of your testimony. Come on. Yes. So talk a little bit about your, your, some of your own personal struggles to authenticity. Yeah, and growing up, you know, in a church you know, with a well-known ministry that was continuing to grow, I felt a spotlight, you know, growing up, as maybe a lot of PKs do, regardless of the church size. And, it, and PK stands for Preacher's Kid, just preacher's for you kids. to know. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes thank you. Um, and what can be dangerous and damaging about that is I think sometimes we're convinced that we have to start performing for people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we can't go through our authentic challenges and struggles and get that real authentic healing or help that we may need. And so, you know, I had to learn to try to block out some voices. Here's a real true story. When I went to ORU, the whole first year, I didn't tell people who my dad was. Wow. And I did that on purpose because yeah. I wanted to have an experience that was not colored yeah. by who 
I came from. Yes. Right. Not that I was ashamed of my family. I was very grateful for them and very proud of them. But Rebecca I wanted to have did a the same thing, my baby. <laughs> really? Yeah. Look at that. They, somebody, the teacher even said, oh, are you? And she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was my experience. Yeah. So true story, my dad came to preach at chapel the beginning of sophomore year for me, uh -huh. and then blew up the whole spot. Oh, wow. He said, hey, you know, it's my son, You're David. That, that, that was it. I mean, the whole spot was blown up, and, like, and it was guilty. okay. It was, it, was, it was okay. You were but, okay by your sophomore year, probably. I was all right. I yeah. had, you know, I, I had my friends, because honestly, Joni, I wanted to know that people wanted to be my friend That's for right. me. Right. Yes. And especially in a culture like ORU, where, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, Christian families and things, um, you know, people who identified with the ministry. I just wanted to be known that I was significant for me, yes, not exactly. from who I that's came so from. That's so good. You know? that so, so good. how does someone know, say someone that's watching right now, that they may be in an identity crisis? I mean, I can think of a lot of things going on in the world with our kids today that just mm -hmm. breaks my heart. Yeah. But how can you know that? And how do you come out of it? Well, I think it first goes back to the Word of God. I think when I tell young people, you know, who are going through identity crisis, identity is always born out of what you identify with. I think a lot of times for our young people, because culture is so loud and in their face, they're tempted to identify with their favorite artist, mm -hmm. their favorite, uh, you know, athlete, their favorite entertainer, this and that, nothing wrong with that. But when you start identifying with them, then your behavior starts to line up with their behavior, right? Sure. And so I tell them, let's go back in the Word and let's make sure that this is the foundation of the identity. Who does God say you are? Yes. Because when you can understand who God says you are, you can be who God has called you to be. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's so good. good. <laughs> and what about the waiting room? Oh. Absolutely. You know, the waiting room... <laughs> can be one of the most stressful places, I think, for any and of us. you're talking about like a waiting room at the hospital and I'm or ER. Exactly. ER. Like an yeah. ER waiting room, a hospital waiting room. I mean, all of us have had to kind of wait or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and when you go to a hospital waiting room, you're waiting for the doctor to come, maybe to see you, to see a loved one, or maybe possibly to see you. It's a stressful time because mm -hmm. you don't know when they're going to come. Yes. And I believe that a lot of times as we're using our gift and God is refining us, we have to endure what I like to call the waiting room, that we know that there's something special inside of us. We're waiting to release it, mm -hmm. but it's not yet ready to be palatable for the world at large. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what God does is he helps us refine our gift in smaller spaces and situations mm -hmm. to be able to be more palatable for the larger audience. So okay, good. so he uses that. He uses that. Do you think that when you're in a waiting room season that it could be really easy for someone to want to forfeit their dreams? Absolutely. They can want to forfeit their dreams. They can want to become someone else in a way to fast track getting mm -hmm. to stardom, you know, into yeah. a broader audience. Yeah. But yeah, it can be really discouraging because, I mean, how many of us are, you know, you're listening, you're a viewer, you're saying, well, I'm gifted, I'm talented, I'm skilled. Yeah. You know, why, why don't they want this? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not even just about you. Sometimes it's also about God preparing your audience. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. so good. He's preparing yes. the hearts of those who are ready to receive what you carry. Yeah. And it may be for years later. I was studying recently about Moses thinking that, you know, he got the best education that the world knew. Was it then years and years later that God used that for him to write the five books of the Pentateuch? That's right. Well, there's so many stories in the Bible where there would be a dream. You think about Joseph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's my favorite Bible character, oh. by the way. <laughs> and I wrote about him in the book. You did write about him in the book. And um, to think about from the time he had those dreams mm -hmm. till they were actually fulfilled, how much time passed and much how God time. used him in such a great way. And there are people watching right now that you have thought about forfeiting your dream. You've thought about giving up on it. And David, I want you just to talk to our audience today about perseverance, don't give up now. And that's why you're watching right now because there's something God put on the inside of you and you're just about to walk away from it. I'm telling you, you're just about to come to that door that's going to open and the light's going to shine in and joy's going to come in the morning and you're going to have an answer. But you're going to quit right before you get there and you're so close. So mm -hmm. don't stop persevering. Yeah. Don't forfeit this dream and just encourage him if you would, David. You know, there's something that I talk about in my book called the oven of preparation. And a lot of times, you know, when we're cooking a good meal, 
it needs to go in the oven for a certain amount of time. And if we take it out before the time, even though all the ingredients were there, if they're not cooked to the right specification, it won't taste the way it was intended to taste. Mm -hmm. And what you might be going through, it might feel hard or challenging. You're saying, why is this taking so long? But my friend, I wanna encourage you that not only is God preparing you, God is also preparing the hearts of those who are gonna receive what you carry. Don't be quick to try to rush out of preparation. Don't try to rush the process. God's timing is supreme. And if you let God control the timeline, yes. there will be supernatural results that follow. Mm -hmm. so, so David, would you take a moment for people who hear us talking, but maybe they have never really invited Jesus into their heart and life. Really, that is the most important thing that can happen before you can really walk in your God-given identity, don't you think? Absolutely. Would you just lead him as you feel led? Absolutely. You know, you might be struggling. You might not feel like you have that place of identity, but identity starts with a life in Christ. Yes. And I want to lead you in a prayer that if you're feeling far from God or you want to start this new life, I want you to repeat this prayer right after me. Say this, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I come to you today, I come to you today just, as I am. just as I am. You know my life and you know how I've lived. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on the cross for my sins and on the third day he rose again. Now Lord, I ask you now, Lord, I ask you, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. From this day forward, from this day my forward, my life belongs to you. My life belongs to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you what, you need to get the book. Um, and what about young people? Can they understand this? Absolutely. This is written for all generations. Even grandma watching could get this for the grandson mom yep. could get it for the daughter yep absolutely and 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 who needs to read it i would say anybody needs to read it who is struggling with their confidence struggling mm. with purpose mm -hmm. or struggling with identity understanding who they are in christ yeah. so good. all right Great christmas yes. gifts yes. well thank you for being here today you've been such a blessing you're thank such you. a joy yes, and just you, you see are. the love of god that just emanates from yes. you mm -hmm. that is such a blessing as well we are out of time what we want you to take away from today's talk is that god uniquely made you and placed you right where you are to fulfill his purpose for your life. And when you walk in that authenticity, lives are going to be changed. And I keep hearing people say, but Joni, you don't know. No, I don't. But God does. Amen. And he's saying, come unto me, all yes. ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you peace and I'll give you rest. It starts with that prayer that we prayed earlier with David. And you just invite Jesus in. I'm telling you, that's the first step. And then get in a good church. That's important, isn't it, David? Absolutely. To get in a Bible-believing church yes. with other believers and then begin to read the Word of God. This is something your dad would say over and over and over. How important is the Word of God in our life? It's got to be the standard to which we live. It's the standard yes. to which we live. Well, if you're watching today, you want to live in your true authentic identity so you can fulfill your purpose. That's why that toll-free number is on the screen. Amazing prayer partners are standing by, always ready to pray with you. Again, I want to thank David for joining us at the table. And uh, Bill Winston, you did a good job on this one. Be sure to pick up his book, Authentic. I know it will be such a blessing to you. It's available now. And for more, you can visit him online at davidswinston.com. As always, if today's Table Talk has touched your life, let us know. You can leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We love hearing what God is doing in your life. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, David. We'll see you next time. Let us know if you prayed that prayer. I'd love to send you a free book entitled, Now What? Call that number. Let us know. Hey, I prayed the prayer. I want the book. Hey, and just like David said, welcome to the family of God. We love you. See you next time. Bye-bye for today.